Well, it looks like Monique did drag her. She just wasn't pregnant at all. <laughs> Y'all already know what time it is. I got the black and neck on. Real Housewives of Potomac season, I don't know. Episode, I don't know. But I do know this. The girls are fighting. What is going on, y'all? This has been a highly requested review that I said, okay, y'all, I'm going to review it for y'all because I love y'all so much. Y'all have been asking me. You have got to cover this last episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. I've watched it probably like two and a half times just to see it and just to cover it from different angles. And I have so much to say. I got so many thoughts about the whole situation with Giselle and um, her father and Jamal Bryant and his salami. Like, girl, so many comments, so many things to say. Let's go ahead and get into it. We start this episode right in the mess. The girls are fighting. You got Candace and Monique. Like, it's, it's a tussle. Like, it's a tussle. Now, watching it, immediately watching it, you can kind of see what led up to it. You got two individuals, you got Candace kind of like, you know, egging uh, Monique on and saying, drag me, drag me, doing all these things. And Monique just did it. Uh, and a lot of folks are choosing sides and saying that Monique was wrong for grabbing Candace and pop, 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 <laughs> pop, pop video. And Candace was wrong for um, even saying anything. Like, instead of saying, drag, you asked for it, you got it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all, times have changed and my spirit has changed. I don't have nothing, I don't see nothing wrong with folks popping. Girl, that's not the right song to be singing while with the shirt on. But I don't see nothing wrong with popping somebody. I, I just don't, like, I don't think it's ghetto. I don't think it's any of those things. I think, you know, of course, you shouldn't put your hands on folks. And you also shouldn't be mouthing off at folks and messing with people. Like, you just don't. Like, I'm not, not somebody fighting does not mean that they're ghetto. Like, if you go back in history, folks have been fighting from, like, from the beginning of time. Like, girl, like, come on now. Folks have been fighting, and that's how I'd rather for folks to go ahead, da 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 then the police being called or somebody having a record and going to jail for two years for something they did for 30 seconds. Take this little beating, if we both agree to it, and get it on out the way. Now... Candace, uh, girl, I haven't been the biggest fan of you, especially considering all the stuff that you be saying on, on, on um, social media uh, when you wish death upon that blogger. I definitely was not a fan of you for that. I um, mean, the other, you know, kind of disrespectful things that you, derogatory things you've been said. I'm not a fan of you, uh, girl. You got popped by your mama at a wedding. Okay, so I don't know how you still going around talking about something that you still broken all up, broken hearted, life's not over, all of these things when. Girl, your mama been bopping you and bopping your finances since the beginning of time. So, Candace, the, the, whatever, the North, Northern Bell, girl, you not no um, Cora. <laughs> girl, you not, you not, girl, you not that girl for you be trying to act like that. So, so I, I'm getting all pissed off because the fight has been the biggest conversation on social media. And I just hate that anytime something like this happens, the anti-blackness comes out with a lot of folks. You had Wendy saying some stuff like, we don't do this. Like, you got her even saying some stuff in the next episode. Like, we don't do this. Like, I, I do this every day. I say my Obama chant. And we're not. We supposed to be bigger people. Like, this is why black women don't be getting a seat at the table. Black women don't get a seat at the table. Black folks don't get a seat at the table because they are black. You ain't got to fight. You ain't got to do anything. You can wear a suit. You can be an AKA. You can be a Delta. You can be all of these things that make you respectable. But at the end of the day, you are black. And they will never see you as an equal. So I would never be interested in no black person saying, this is why black, white folks don't want us. They don't want us because of white supremacy. That's it. I don't understand how, like, women, I'm trying to like you because I love your family. I love black everything. I love you and your dark-skinned husband. But the anti-blackness is too much for me, girl. It's too much for me. It's too much from Giselle, too. How are you talking about all this? And your husband right here smashing everybody from Timbuktu is so 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 bad that your father don't even want to support you and your relationship. Because he don't believe that your own kids don't even want to be a part of it. You need to be worried about while you over here talking and having a conversation trying to figure out where Monique is at. You need to be having a conversation with your children and actively listening to what your children are saying because your children are not interested in no relationship with Jamal. They don't like what he has done to you and they don't feel comfortable around him. You can see it. We all can see it. It's written all over everybody's faces and the six, seven baby mamas. Like, girl, ain't nobody interested. But you know what, Giselle? I'm not... I, I really... 
I really think the only reason why you're interested in being with Jamal Bryant is because you need a storyline. Because you and that junkie house that Property Brothers need to be visiting ain't enough for us to be getting behind. I love your daughters. Love your daughters down. Everything. But Giselle, you don't bring anything for me. Like, you're just not that interesting to me. From You're not the reason why I'm watching the show, honestly. I'm going to be completely honest. But, uh, girl, uh, going back, Monique, you definitely need to, do, you got some therapy. You need to be dealing. You got some insecure, some stuff that you need to be working on. Like, sis, I'm, I'm watching it, and you blacked out. And I can imagine, like, it reminded me when Kenya Moore and uh, Portia got into it real bad. Like, Portia had blacked out. And I still, to this day, don't think Portia was wrong for what she did. She was pushed to the limit. She was pushed to the limit. She just, she lost it. And sometimes we do. Yes, we should not put our hands on nobody. It should never get to that point. But when you egging folks on and you bothering them that much, like that's the only way people have to defend themselves. Like it just, it happens. It, it like it just happens, and I have I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think it makes you a lesser person or anything. Yes, we need to control our emotions, but you need to control your mouths. And Candace, you should have controlled your mouth. You kept popping off. You kept popping off, and you got popped. Now, as the thing goes, you can tell that, that Monique was like over it. She. Candace kept saying even more stuff after the situation. They said that some stuff was in now. She kept calling her a hood rat. Just anti-blackness on top of anti-blackness. Candace, if she could have transformed like um, um, Ruby and, and, um, and, and Lovecraft, she would have been a white woman right in that moment. She was very much a white woman in that moment. She was playing a white woman in distress. This ghetto black girl has put her hands on me. She should be on the show. She, she pulled into the anti-blackness so much. That she is trying to use this for Monique not to come back. Like, this is the thing. Like, yeah, you get fired. Get fired. You're not going to come back. But, the, you know what? The, there's only one person, and it's not even a person that is responsible for this fight who I fought. And, unfortunately, that's Bravo. Like, you can't expect to continue to put these women in these situations with all this stuff going on, folks egging on for the show. Because that's a lot of y'all. Like, y'all tell them to get to do this drama. Y'all don't tell them, but y'all, they know that drama sells. So, y'all are pushing for it. Y'all aired this episode, like, like, y'all kept going with this clip. Like, this fight was literally 30, 45 seconds that we've seen, but y'all have been talking about the whole entire season. Like, it was one of the things that y'all used in the commercials. So if anybody is at fault, it is Bravo. I'm not putting the fault on Candace. I'm not putting the, putting the fault, the blame on Monique either. I'm putting the, the fault on Bravo. Y'all are responsible. And I actually like Bravo sometimes, like Truly Entertainment or whatever the hell their name is this week. But y'all push these ladies and y'all put these, these women in these situations and then this is be the outcome. So, uh, girl, it, it was, it wasn't. I didn't get the mom shaming thing. Um, I really didn't see that as mom shaming. Um, like, I, I can see people doing mom shaming. I think mom shaming is definitely a thing, but I don't think in that instance, I don't think that was mom shaming. Um, like, like, girl, I think can't, I think Monique wanted, like, to let her know, like, girl, you ain't got no kids, so you don't know. And, and I feel like she got a point, like, sis, yeah, like, girl, I got a lot of other stuff to take care of, and you don't have no children. Not saying that you need kids to understand everything, but, like, girl, I, I got a lot going on with my household. Um... What, what else is going on? So, when the fight ended and everybody was making phone calls, Candace calling her husband a white man and just like, oh, I don't know what to do. And, uh, it was just, it was so pitiful. I couldn't watch that. Watching um, Monique call Big Daddy. Y'all know I'm not the biggest fan of Big Daddy. I, I really, I'm not. Like, he said some stuff that was questionable homophobic to me. That's just me. I don't give a damn if you don't believe it or not. I just It just was questionable to me. Um, but how he... You know, he, I don't felt like he was not there for her in that moment while the cameras was rolling. Um, I always believe in when you're with your partner or whoever, you are supposed to support them 100% in front of everybody. Like, you, you, you reprimand in private and you um, promote in public. Like, yeah, like, baby, it's okay. Like, come on home. I got you. We're going to be good. We're going to get through this. That's the energy that I was looking for from Big Daddy. Not Big Daddy lashing out and saying something, but he probably even know it's being filmed or whatever. But I, I didn't. I didn't like that moment. It was hard. It was difficult to watch because Monique was very vulnerable in that moment. I definitely feel like Monique felt bad in that moment. She just didn't realize she still had her guard up at that moment. And you can kind of tell where where the energy lies of like the group when after a situation like this happened, everybody ran to Candace and protected Candace. Like almost everybody was like, "Oh my God!" Like Candace, like girl, sis was having her hair. Like baby, they had her baby. I holla. 
Um, but people did check on Monique. Girl, I screamed when um, Home Girl came out. Ashley, this is your daughter Ashley. When Ashley came out, she's like, "What just happened? The room, the, the whole building is shaking." Uh, and Ashley was late to the party. She didn't know what was going on. But I think Ashley came out and was kind of supportive of Candace. No, I think no, I think Ashley was supportive of Monique. Monique, she was like, you know, she said something in support of Monique. And um, Wendy had an issue with it um, or something. I just. I really want to like Wendy, but I don't think I'm gonna like her because she, like, girl, it's just it's too much for me. If I if I heard her ass talk about Obama and, and being a, like the perfect picture pup for for white folks, I would literally throw up. And I, I like sis, I would literally throw up. Now, and, and I really wanted to like you, really wanted to like you, but the anti-blackness is is too much for me. So after all this drama, we got Giselle getting the kids to get ready to go to Atlanta for this grand opening or whatever they want to call. Or restructuring whatever they want to call it this week or this minute um, for this restaurant called Arizona that is in what Stone Mountain or wherever I know Stonecrest or some a part of Atlanta or it's not even Atlanta that I don't frequent um, and you can just tell like the girls are not necessarily excited about it like they get to the restaurant they're helping out with the restaurant and like they're doing this like kind of grand opening and you got Jamal Bryant being the scammer who he is and just getting everybody excited to spend money so he can bring in some profit. It just doesn't surprise me. Like he talking all this stuff like, oh, like we got a generational wealth and all of this. Generational wealth sounds cute on paper, but it's not going to eradicate white supremacy. It just won't do any of that. Like, girl, it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just not. It looks cute. I mean, I like the beat, but it's just it's not really. I mean, it's cute, I guess. But um, Jamal Bryant, um, I'm just not a fan of him at all. And they sat down, and the father was having a conversation, and you know, telling Giselle like, "Hey, I'm gonna support you, Giselle. Like, I, I like, I'm not gonna do that again. I'm just gonna support you a um, hundred percent." But then when they sat down at the table at the dinner, and they having a conversation about it. You can just tell that he was not moved. Like looking at Jamal, he was just not like. He didn't feel like that he was on any on any level with Giselle. And Giselle, like, I'm not the biggest fan of you, but Jamal Bryan is not on your level. He's just not. He, like, he's just trash. And I think, like, he was a, he looked like a weak, pitiful ass man to me. There's no way I'm sitting next to your, your father. The man who helped bring you in this world. I'm sitting next to him. And he knows that I have cheated on you and I got all these babies. I'm like, he knows all the situation. And I'm not talking to this man trying to win him over to like understand like, hey, I like your daughter. And I want to be with her. I want to be with her. And I'm willing to do everything I can to, to win her over and make this relationship work. Like, that's the type of energy that I wanted. But Jamal Bryant seemed like he was scared to look him in the eye. He just seemed like he was just intimidated. He just looked like a weak ass pitiful man that probably does have sex with folks in the congregation. So, like, Giselle, he's just not on your level. I wish you would just leave him alone. Your kids are not interested in him. And I really don't even like talking about kids on reality shows, but you, you propping them up. And your kids are beautiful. I love all of them. Matter of fact, the hotel you stayed in was the hotel I stayed in when I first came to Atlanta when I was talking about moving here. Um, I love that. Shout out to my girl who used to work at the Marriott, at that Marriott, and she used to make sure that I was good with my rooms and my hotel rooms and stuff. Um, and then her um, big, big friend. Um, <laughs> But, uh, Giselle, like, I just don't see it for you and Jamal Bryant. I just, I, I ain't, I'm not feeling it. It's just not, it's not doing anything for me. I don't like it. Like, move on. Uh, Karen and Ray. Karen uh, and um, Uncle Ray, Uncle Remus, or whatever you want to call him, relationship is crumbling. I think Karen been known that. Karen been known that she trying to cook and clean, cook and clean, and I'll do all those things. And Ray just, he just, he don't know. Like, he's just like, girl, you stop cooking. Um, and now he's talking about a hurricane need to blow him over so he can be ready to love. Um, and like, I just don't see it, Karen. I just, I do think that in relationships sometimes, like, things change. Now, when it comes to relationships, I definitely can tell you this. You are not going to have the same person that you met ain't going to be the same person. That can be a good thing for you or it can be like a bad thing. Like a person can grow to you and, and eventually like recognize some of the stuff they were doing and getting better or sometimes they can get worse in the process. Like it just happens. You cannot expect, I'm not the same person I was five years ago. So I can't be in a relationship and expect somebody to be the same for the, or the love to be the same for the next 20, 30 years. Like it's just, it's just not. Like it's, it's just not. So you got to find ways to make the relationship work. 
Um, and it seems like Karen's trying to do that. And I think Karen is doing that more to save face versus just trying to do what she wants. Like, Karen has become more um, independent in all these things because of the success of Real Housewives of Potomac. I was watching me, um, I was watching Wendy talk about that Karen is too good for Real Housewives of Potomac. I think Karen is not that good for, like, she definitely needs to be on Real Housewives of Potomac because she needs the money. She needs the income. She needs to be, she has been able to find her own independence while being on this show. So Wendy, like, I, like Wendy be offering advice. I'm just like, girl, you can't give too much advice um, with all the stuff that you had going on. So I was watching her and Amy on the Watch What Happens Live, um, and she was just talking about how much she likes Karen, and Karen is too good for Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, I think that Karen found her independence while being on this. She was able to see herself more. She was able to bring in more income. And she didn't feel um, hold it to Ray. Like, she can do her own things. And Ray didn't like that. Men, oftentimes, I like talking to women and talking to my mother. Men sometimes who are older and they have a younger wife, they have this complex. They don't want to see the, ooh, girl, Shay. They don't want to, because I'm... I'm do I, do I recognize this in my own self? They don't want to see um, their wives be independent. They want to be the one that's, that's, that's watching the money and making sure all these things because that's power. They have power over that. So now that Karen is doing her own thing and all this, because it's okay when the man after traveling, doing all this business stuff because that's what a man's supposed to do. But now that Karen is doing these things and making her own moves, Ray is intimidated by that. Um, and I think that... Um, Karen and uh, Ray definitely are just roommates. Now, I like Miss um, Homegirl that pulled up with the soothing voice, um, with the pillow talk. I loved her. Loved her voice. I loved the conversations that she was having. Um, Karen spazzed out afterwards. Karen was pressed boots after that situation, girl. She was kind of, she was like over it a little bit. She was like, you don't love me? Like Ray had revealed that he's not, in, like he was like not as in love with her anymore. And I think that if Karen would have said that, I don't think Karen, I don't think that Ray would have been that hurt by it because he would have recognized that he's not the same. Like, yeah, girl, me too. But I think that Karen didn't say that. Like, Karen didn't say that. So it's just like, oh, girl, so I'm out here dealing with all this stuff with you. You throwing me all these curveballs that I ain't interested in, and I'm still, quote, unquote, in love with you. But I'm doing all these things, and you ain't in love with me? Girl, Karen's pissed off. She couldn't breathe. I got to breathe, so let me... And it's Barbie, bitch. <laughs> um, what else is going on? Um, Monique talking to Big Daddy. She watching her beautiful child's hair. Um, Big Daddy just like he's embarrassed while going to get Starbucks. I'm, a, I'm embarrassed that y'all ain't got no real breakfast. <laughs> but y'all rich, y'all got plenty of money. But him and this whole image stuff, girl, screw that image. Like, girl, you fought that girl. Oh, well. Um, like, oh, girl, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be okay. Like, you bopped her. Candace needs to be bopped. Maybe first time her mama popped her in the head of the purse. She'll get over it. So, Candace, you doing all this stuff. You still talking mess. You out here. I'm, I'm still dealing with stuff. It's just like, girl, go sit down. But I definitely recognize that, Monique, you definitely got some stuff that you got to work out with, girl. Because you have been at this girl. You have been at Candace a lot, girl. And it's, it might be something more than that. You are pissed off with this whole situation with Sharice. And I'm really starting to think that maybe you did have a, um, a relationship or something with your whatever, the tennis player or whoever, that was inappropriate. Maybe you more pissed off that that information got leaked out or got put out and now this cookie cutter image that you had ain't so cookie cutter. So I'm starting to believe that. Yes, Candace was wrong for inviting that, that Sharice over and doing all these things and stuff, but like... Girl, let that go. Let that girl, like, let it go. Like, let it go. Let go and let God. Like, Candace was wrong for it, but she's apologized for it. It's the game of Real Housewives of Potomac. That's just what it is. It's the game of Housewives. Drama, 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 drama. Ain't none of these folks your friends. Play the game, play the game, if that's what you want to do. Um, but the next episode, it's going to be a lot of anti-blackness for me. I might be asking T to reach out so we can do a video about that together because Wendy is working my everlasting fucking nerves. I swear to God she is. Um, and Giselle talking about some, I can't see you. I'm just like, Giselle over here grinding and grinding all on um, Monique and what she got going on. And her husband right here grinding his salami all up in the, in the, in the church. <laughs> Girl, what's going on? Tell him to find another church. Maybe he need to go to church as chicken. That's all I got. This episode of Real House for Apple Thomas was cute. Uh, don't be expecting me to review it every day, every week, because I just won't. But, girl, tell me what y'all thought. Who y'all think was wrong? My pick for who is wrong, Bravo is wrong. But y'all let me know who y'all felt was wrong, and let me know the reason why, and I'll talk y'all later tonight. Bye. Okay, you want to get pop again?
Oh,